Hi, in this lecture, we are going to study the formula to determine the transverse and longitudinal shear stress in stress member subjected to bending. Here is the context for our discussion. Assume we know the shear force V and the bending moment M at a cross section of a beam, like the one on the screen. We are interested in finding the state of stress at a point on the cross section, let's say this point. From a previous lecture, we already know that the state of stress at the point will be the following. Where sigma is a normal or bending stress caused by the bending moment and tau is a transverse shear stress caused by the shear force V. In the last lecture, we learned how to find the bending stress sigma based on the flexor formula. Similarly, in today's lectures, we will learn how to find the shear stress tau based on the use of the shear formula. Since determining the parameters in the shear formula is rather complicated, let us learn how to use the formula first before discussing its development. That said, you can see the shear formula on the screen. Let's say we want to use the formula to determine the transverse shear stress at the following point on the cross section. We can call the point of interest. As you can see, parameter V in the equation represents the shear force at the cross section, which can be found from the shear diagram or being given. Parameter I is the moment of inertia of the cross section about the neutral axis. Parameter T is the width of the cross section at the point of interest. Q is the parameter calculated by the following equation. Where A prime is the area of the cross section above the point of interest and y bar prime is the distance from the centroid of area a prime to the neutral axis knowing the definition of those parameters we will now discuss how engineers came up with the formula understanding that will help us know how to use the formula correctly Again, here is the problem statement. Given the internal shear force V acting on the cross section, we want to find the transverse shear stress at each point. I believe here will be the equation that you might come up with based on the assumption of a uniform shear stress distribution. However, this equation will not give us an accurate value of shear stress. For example, let us consider the transverse shear stress for a point at the top edge of the cross section. Since we do not have any material on the top surface of the element, the shear stress on that surface must be zero. Then, based on the complementary property of shear, we know the transverse shear stress at this location must also be zero which makes the assumption of uniform shear stress distribution invalid. This tells us that we need to develop a more accurate formula for determining shear stress. For that, let us look again at the problem statement. We need to determine the shear stress at any point on a cross section of the beam, given the internal shear force, the internal bending moment, and the dimension of the cross section. Since we do not have any idea how to proceed from this perspective, except the one we just discussed, let us have a side view of a differential length element of the beam. You can see that here is a stress that we need to find, which is called the transverse C stress. Due to the complementary property of shear, we know that the transverse shear stress is equal to the stresses on top and bottom surface 
of the element, the so-called longitudinal shear stress. That said, we can find the transverse shear stress indirectly through finding this longitudinal shear stress. Here, the main idea is to find this stress, we will use a section plane that is coplanar with the bottom surface of the cube element and consider the equilibrium of forces in the horizontal direction for some free body diagram that you will see shortly. That said, let us get rid of the vertical forces in the diagram and replace the bending moment on the left and right cross section by the bending stresses. Since we want to determine the shear stress at the bottom surface of this element, let us section the entire length element through that surface and consider the top portion. For writing the equilibrium equation, let us replace each distributed by a single concentrated force. Then here is the equilibrium of forces in the horizontal direction. We can rewrite it as follows. Let us rotate to have a better look at the portion. With this, you can see the area A prime that we mentioned earlier in the shear formula. Now assume the longitudinal shear stress is distributed uniformly over the bottom surface of the portion. The force F tau will be calculated by multiplying the stress we are trying to find with the bottom area of the portion. Next, let us find the equation to calculate the force F sigma. If you remember from the last lecture, for that we will start with a differential area da prime like this. Determine the force caused by the normal or bending stress on the area and integrate it over area a prime. In the same manner, we can write the equation for finding the force f sigma prime. Then let us plug this equation into the second one from the top. Rewrite it. Rewrite it again. And keep in mind that the derivative of the bending moment M is equal to the shear force V. Then we will obtain the following equation. Where, as you can see, Q is the first moment of area A prime above the neutral axis. If you remember from statics, that moment can be found by multiplying area A prime with the distance of each centroid from the neutral axis. In other words, we can rewrite this equation to be the following. which is nothing but the shear formula we discussed earlier. Now, having understood the development of the shear formula, let us discuss how to find its parameters for different scenarios. Starting with the most basic rectangular cross-section. Let's say we need to find the transverse shear stress for a point, point P, then parameter t in the shear formula will be the width of the rectangle. Here will be area a prime and y bar prime to determine parameter q. The next in our list is the i beam as shown on the screen. Suppose we want to find the shear stress for a location P on the flange. Then parameter T will be the width of the flange. Area A prime will be on the flange. 
and we can easily find parameter y bar prime. However, if we have to find the shear stress for a point on the web of the beam, then parameter t will be the width of the web. Area A prime will include the area of the top flange and the top portion of the web. In this case, we will have to use the weighted average method to find the centroid of A prime for determining parameter y bar prime. Please review statics in case you forgot how to find the centroid for a composite area. For a beam of T-shape cross-section, the procedure to find the parameters in the shear formula is almost the same as the I-shape beam where we need to consider whether the point of interest is on the flange or on the web. You can see that compared with the I-shape beam, the neutral axis of the T-beam is located closer to the top edge of the cross-section. One of the most confusing situations when we have to find parameter t is probably the one on the screen. Why t in this case should be found by adding t1 and t2? I have seen some students consider one of the values to be parameter t. I believe that will not be the case if you clearly understood the process we discussed earlier to develop the shear formula. Now let us conclude this lecture by discussing the limitation of the shear formula. First, why we assume a uniform distribution of the shear stress over the width of the cross section. A more detailed analysis revealed that is not the case and the maximum shear stress will occur at the side of the cross section. For rectangular cross section, the difference between the maximum shear stress predicted by the shear formula and the one found from the detailed analysis depends on the width and height ratio. For example, if the ratio is 0 0.5, then the difference will be very small, 3%. However, if that ratio is 2, then the difference between the two will be as large as 40%. Second, the shear formula cannot be used to predict the shear stress at the location of sudden change in the geometry. Finally, the shear formula will not be applicable across a section that is not perpendicular to the side boundary of the cross section. That's all for this lecture. Thank you and see you in the next one.